federal government is proposing hefty fines for companies that fail to protect the information of Canadians or abuse that information. The new measures will help Canada's privacy protections get up to international standards. The legislation introduced today would force more transparency and control of personal information and Canadians and of Canadians rather and what companies are doing with it. Canadians who aren't satisfied with how their information is being handled can order it deleted uh, and destroyed. They'll also have the freedom to move, uh, move that information from one organization to another in a secure manner. The bill would also give more powers to the Privacy Commissioner to force organizations to comply with the regulations and could order a company to stop collecting personal information altogether. Companies that don't comply face fines of up to 5% of global revenues or $25 million, whichever is greater. Navdeep Baines is Canada's Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. He joins me now it's, uh, to discuss these proposed changes to the uh, protection of the privacy of Canadians. It's his bill uh, tabled in the House today. Minister Baines, good to see you again. Well, thanks very much for having me on. Uh, let's start with why you've moved uh, to update the privacy protections for Canadians. Why are these changes and improved protections necessary now? It was long overdue. Uh, if you uh, recall, in around 20 years ago, we introduced PIPEDA, the first set of uh, legislation around privacy protection. Uh, and the world has changed significantly. Back then, social media wasn't as prevalent. Uh, in the Internet of Things was not as prevalent. And today, especially with COVID-19, more people are working online, are learning online, are accessing information online. And so it's critical that uh, they have more control over their data and that their privacy is protected. Uh, and we believe this is important to create trust online, which is not only good for Canadians and consumers, but it's also good for businesses as well who are becoming more and more prevalent in this data and digital driven economy to succeed going forward by using these platforms. Okay, so I touched on them at the top of our conversation here. What, what new powers uh, will this give Canadians over their personal information? What greater controls will they now have? Well, the first measure that we introduced is around consent. Uh, Canadians uh, will be able to provide their consent, uh, but the information that they receive uh, with regards to that has to be done in plain, simple language, not a 30-page illegal document that, that no one understands. Uh, you also highlighted data portability, the ability to move your data from one entity to another, and, and the ability to request your data to be deleted or destroyed if uh, you no longer provide consent. And so that gives uh, consumers and Canadians a lot of control, uh, and that's uh, gonna be critical going forward. So what, I mean, you talked about the ability to, to, to say, okay, I don't like what you're doing with my personal information. I want it deleted, want it destroyed. Uh, but what will the legislation allow them to do if they, for instance, if they have the complaint, if they think that they've somehow been wrong, maybe they've suffered uh, some financial damage because of the misuse of that information. What are the steps that Canadians can then take uh, to, to, to perhaps get con uh, compensation for damage that's been done? So there's a couple of components to that question. If, for example, Canadians feel that companies are not complying with the legislation, are not following the rules, they can follow up with the privacy commissioner who has the order making powers uh, and can compel uh, data to be deleted uh, can compel that data uh, be destroyed if it's not uh, obtained properly through meaningful consent. And so those are important order-making powers given to the Privacy Commissioner to support complaints that come forward from Canadians. Okay, so it, let, let me jump. Just to, so, is it, so is it exclusively complaint-driven, or will the Commissioner also be checking out what companies are doing to make sure they're complying? It's primarily driven based on the feedback the officer, the Privacy Commissioner, would receive from Canadians. So they have the ability to follow up with the Privacy Commissioner and say, look, uh, we feel that uh, this company is not following the rules, is not compliant with the new privacy legislation. And then the uh, Privacy Commissioner can pursue that complaint and make uh, the request and, or demand that information actually. And, they, and he has the order making capability to do that. These fines of 5% of global revenues or $25 million, whichever is greatest. Uh, is it your expectation that that level of, 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 of damage to a company that's not complying will be enough to ensure compliance? It's meaningful accountability. You've got to follow the rules. Uh, and failure to do so would lead to these significant fines, the strongest amongst the G7. And it sends a very clear signal that uh, we take privacy very seriously. And it's good not only for... Uh, consumers, uh, this uh, this accountability mechanism, but it's good for companies as well. Uh, 
Uh, this legislation creates predictability. It creates a clear framework for them to operate within. Uh, they can make the business investments uh, and companies are becoming more and more digital. And so uh, the, these uh, accountability mechanisms provides them the ability to make uh, investments in this new data and digital driven economy. Uh, which it will help with their economic recovery going forward. All right. Uh, Minister Baines, uh, good to talk to you this evening. We'll watch how this uh, legislation makes its way through the uh, legislative process. Uh, thanks for giving us your uh, perspective tonight. Thanks very much for having me on.